Monday, May 4th. Beth Sheldon and I flew together from Pittsburgh to Atlanta, where we met Lois Richter, our team leader. Then the three of us flew to Mexico City and then to Minatitlan. We were met at the Minatitlan airport by Pastor Manuel Lopez, a very joyful man, and his wife, Felipa. Their daughter, Susanna, and two young women, Rebecca and Alexander, who served us as interpreters. They drove us to the Hotel Los Andes in Coatzacoalcos, where we are to stay for our entire 10 days, branching out to minister in different cities. During our drive to the hotel, Pastor Manuel told us a bit of the history of Coatzacoalcos, a name that means the place of the snake or where the snake hides. Originally, the location was called Via de Espiritu Santo, which means the village of the Holy Spirit. Then in 1936, the city changed the name to Coatzacoalcos. Local pastors are not happy about it, and they're praying for it to be returned to its original name. They prayed for a plaza to be named the Holy Spirit Plaza, and it was done. We drove past it, and there's a big sculpture of a white dove there. Awesome. However, the snake influence is there, too. There are also sculptures and plazas named for those things. These local Christians are very involved in their city, wanting to see it transformed. There's a lot of growth here, new business, etc. We checked in at our hotel and spent the rest of the day resting from our trip. This afternoon, I met Sandra for the first time. Sandra is a pastor's wife from Comitán in the state of Chiapas, Mexico. She had to travel by bus many hours to join us for this series of conferences. She's one of the teachers on our team. We go to the hotel restaurant for a drink before we go. Pineapple, celery, and cactus juice. Yummy! On the drive to the conference from Coatzacoalcos to Minatitlan, Felipa described the landscape area around the highway. Vast stretches of land on both sides of the highway with nothing but grasses and weeds. It gets so hot here that they dry out, and then people litter continually along the road so there's a lot of broken glass. The sun catches the glass, creates a spark, creates a fire which spreads quickly in that dried grass. Sometimes they cannot drive on the freeway because of the fire and smoke. As you look over the landscape, you can see the parched earth and new growth of weeds and grass starting to grow. And then they dry and it happens all over again. We had our first conference at the Hotel Madrid in Minatitlan. There were about 30 women there. The evening was really wonderful. After the sessions, we were taken to a restaurant named Vips, where we had a late dinner. We all felt our sessions had gone well and that we connected with the women there. And then at dinner, we had good fellowship with Pastor Manuel and Filippo, Rebecca, and Alex. Then we went back to our hotel for sleep. Wednesday, May 6th. We had breakfast at the hotel restaurant. Then Filippo picked us up and took us to the beach, where we walked along a long pier to a lighthouse. She shared with us more of the history of the region and things that are going on still today. We stopped afterward at a stand where they sold chilled coconuts. The owners cut a hole in one end and we drank the coconut water right out of the shell. And then the man took a machete, chopped the coconut in half and scooped out the meat and gave it to us to eat. It's a very hot day. Quetzalcoatlcos is nicknamed the place where the devil goes naked because it's so hot there. By the time we got back to the hotel, we were all drenched with perspiration. So Lois and I took our second showers for the day, washed out our clothes, and hung them out on bushes to dry. When we arrived back at the Hotel Madrid, there were many women there early, which seems to indicate their excitement to hear more. They've obviously invited more women, and some have even come with their babies. The first night there had only been about 30 women attending. Tonight it more than doubled. Philippa explained to us that in this local culture the men do as they please, so their last men's conference was packed out, but the women don't have the same liberty. Very few husbands would watch children while their wives go to a conference. That's why their attendance was less. Honestly, I thought the attendance was fine, but obviously more have come for this second night. 
We did our sessions and the women were very enthusiastic and responsive. I had the first session tonight and Sandra was second. And then Beth finished with a powerful message. Then we ministered in prayer to those who came forward and nearly all of them did. We all prayed for many people. It was great. And at the end, many, many people wanted their picture taken with us. Wow, again. Then we went to a different VIP location and had dinner and got to bed around 1 a.m. Thursday, May 7th. We had dinner early today before the conference. I had a drink called horchata, which is cinnamon rice milk. It was delicious, kind of like liquid rice pudding. Philippa picked us up at 5.30 to go to the Quetzalcoatlcus Conference. It was held at the Evangelism Center of the Holy Spirit. As we turned the corner in front of the center, Philippa gasped when she saw an absolute flood of women in line pouring into the building. They had had chairs set up for the women inside and had to add eight more rows. It was very full, 265 women. Friday, May 8th. Our team talked and shared with one another. We met with Philippa at noon to discuss the plan for this evening. Tonight I am the first speaker, Sandra is second, and Lois decided that while Sandra is speaking, the rest of the team, which is Lois, Beth, and I, will meet with the pastor's wives to encourage them and minister to any problems they may be having. Then Beth will have the last session, and will come back in the morning for the third day of this conference. Something strange happened today. As we waited in the lobby for Philippa to pick us up, there was a man there who told us that the pastor had sent him to pick us up. Fortunately, Sandra had the wherewithal to tell him, we will wait for Philippa. Turns out nobody knew anything about it. We don't know if this man was legit or if he could have been trying to hijack us. My session went well. I was very emotional but the women really responded to it. Then, during Sandra's session, the rest of us met with the pastor's wives. Lois encouraged them to build relationships with one another, joining arm in arm. It was a very good time together. At the end of tonight's sessions, we all went up on the platform to pray a blessing over the women. We prayed for them all in general. Then I prayed and asked the Lord if there was anything specific He wanted me to say or to reveal to any of them. I heard nothing, but that's okay. The Lord will do what he will do. I just want to be open in case he wants to use me for anything. Saturday, May 9th. We are expecting to be doing a lot of prayer ministry at the end today. The day went very well. We had so many women there. They all seemed to want a picture taken with us. They treat us like celebrities. At the end of the evening, we all felt like our smiles were just glued on. <laughs> It is all wonderful, though. I'm so grateful to be here. We ended around 2.30 and went back to our hotel. We are only eating two meals a day. We're just not very hungry, and we're being careful not to do anything to upset our stomachs. So far, so good. Sunday, May 10th. Today is a rest day. The four of us spent a few hours sitting outside at a shaded table just having fellowship and sharing stories about being in the ministry. We are invited to Rebecca and Alex's home for lunch with their mother. So we went to lunch at Rebecca's house and met the rest of her family. They made us a nice meal and flan for dessert. Delicioso. Her mother shared her testimony with us, how knowing the Lord changed her life and her character and personality. It was excellent. As we were leaving, they cut us some evening jasmine from a tree in their courtyard. Siesta time. Today I didn't sleep. I just rested and played games on my phone and chatted with Lois. We solved all the problems of the church worldwide and were about to start solving the problems of the U.S. government, but instead we decided to go to the restaurant with Beth at about 8.30 to have some halato. We had good conversation and fellowship and then broke to go to bed. Monday, May 11th. Another rest day. Lois, Beth, and I had breakfast at the hotel. Then we went for our individual morning devotions. Philippa is picking us up around 11.30, and we're going to a mercado, or a marketplace, to shop. There is an iguana that hangs out in this hotel's courtyard garden. I've seen him twice. 
From head to tail, I'd say he's over three feet long, and his body would fit in my circled hands with my fingertips touching. I got a few pics of him climbing up a tree, but I'd love to get some closer shots, so I'm hoping for another opportunity. By the time we went to the Mercado, oh my goodness, it is hot. I was able to buy a few souvenirs for my grandkids. When we got back to our hotel, we all retreated to our rooms to shower and let the air conditioning cool us. Tuesday, May 12th. Tonight's conference is in Akayukan. We have about a 90-minute drive to get there. It's nice out here in the morning. The full heat of the sun hasn't come out yet, and there's a nice breeze. I pray for tonight and tomorrow night that we will be able to finish well, that the Lord will have His way in us and in the women who are attending. On the way to Akayukan, Philippa shared with us that this area was a place of great darkness, lots of witchcraft and things like that. Our message of light is very appropriate and very needed. Our first night at Akayukan was great. Our two extra interpreters were not with us tonight, so I felt hindered in my ability to go and pray for women who came up. We prayed a general blessing, and I saw Sandra going out and praying for individuals, but without interpreters. The best I could do is pray in my prayer language and just ask God to pour out His Spirit on them. There were about 150 women at this event. We returned to our hotel near midnight. One more night, and then we're heading for home. Wednesday, May 13th. This entire trip I've been praying for God to use us in spiritual gifts, but I have to leave that in His hands. I can't make it happen on my own, and I don't want to light my own fires. But I have to admit, I was hoping for Him to move that way. Oh well, Lord, as you will, I am willing. We are all resting as much as we can today, because we know we will be ministering late tonight and then have to get up very early to catch our flight. Before the last session, they called up our team and presented us with woven fans trimmed with lace. Then they prayed for us and blessed us. I felt humbled and touched by their outpouring of love to us. They've served us and treated us like royalty ever since we walked through the door yesterday. Well, now we are finished. We finished well. At the end, we called all the pastors and pastors' wives up and spent time praying over them, ministering to them and blessing them. Then we had them turn around and invited others who needed ministry to come up so these pastors and their wives could minister to them. After all, we are leaving. These are the men and women who are their everyday ministers. And so there was still ministry going on as we left. Philippa drove us back to our hotel. We said goodbye to Sandra, who is catching her bus at midnight. Then Philippa will be back at 5 a.m. to drive us to the airport. Wow, Philippa has laid down her life for us for the past 10 days. Tomorrow, home.